Module 13 Statistical Significance and P Values, Section 1 Significance Level, P Values and Statistical Significance. Significance level and p value, what are these terms? Significance level, or also known as threshold p value or alpha, is chosen by the experimenter as part of the experimental design before collecting any data. Remember, even before collecting any data, you have to decide your significance level. And you cannot change it after you generate your data or while doing the analysis. When you, if you are changing your significance level, then that, that is cheating. You know, that is a scientific misconduct. So p-value is com computed from your data. So that is the main difference here. While p-value is computed from the generated data after finish completing all your experiment, while alpha is decided, there is no computation involved, just decided, it's an arbitrary value as part of your study design. There is a very famous statement by James L. Millis. It says that if you if you're going for a fishing, so it says if the fishing expedition catches a boat, the fisherman should throw it back and not claim that they were fishing for boots. See, that is exactly, many people do this mistake uh, while it's not just a mistake but it's, a, it's basically a misconduct by changing the significance level after you generate the data which is, uh, uh, it's very bad and uh, it's an, an unethical practice. So significance level is an arbitrary chosen by uh, widely as 0.05. So that is actually uh, co correspond to 95 percentage confidence level. So the confidence interval and uh, you know, 0.05 p threshold uh, is quite widely used. You no know, 0.05 as well as 0.05 uh, of the p value or 95 percentage confidence interval. So however, ideally the alpha has to be chosen based upon the context. So relative tolerance to uh, you know that the type one and type two errors. So that is exactly important uh, uh, what it decides which alpha to be chosen. So you can use low alpha like 0 0.01 to have less chance of making type 1 or false positive uh, errors. But beware the chance of making type 2 that is false negative is increased. So that is the problem with going with uh, very low alpha. So if you are using very low alpha definitely false positive will be less but false negative is going to be high. So consequence is that the more type 2 errors or false negative errors for some what are the examples of this type 2 errors? More spam in the inbox or criminal is set free or the test says negative for HIV positive person or adopt athlete is set free or an effective drug is declared as ineffective and abort the drug development. All these are wrong, isn't it? Now you can use high alpha like 0.1 which is higher than 0 0.05 usual threshold you see to have less chance of making type 2 error that is false negative errors but beware chance of making type 1 error that is false positive is substantially increased. So what are the, uh, some examples of the consequences of more type 1 errors or false positives? A good email is declared as a spam and deleted or an innocent is punished in a criminal jurisdiction. So the test says positive for HIV negative person, you know, an innocent athlete is declared to be dopped and banned for the life or an ineffective drug is declared as effective and marketed. All of these are wrong practices. So, but now it is all give and take. So, if you go for a high uh, alpha, it has its own problem. If you go with low alpha, it has its own problem. So, it all depends upon the context. Case to case basis, you have to decide which alpha to be used. So, you can use low alpha like 0 0.01 to minimize false positive. And it is ideal for those situations where false negatives are tolerated. Because false negative, increased false negative is consequence so the false negative is kind of tolerated then it's fine to go with those uh, you know the the alpha which is quite low 0 0.01 which are the situations where false negatives are tolerated uh, criminal jurisdiction because it is better to let many guilty persons go free rather than to falsely indict one innocent person so that is uh, prevailing ethics 
uh, all around the world right except few countries in the world so this is how uh, we usually think about it so that is kind of okay in the case of criminal jurisdiction spam filter also it's better to have spam emails in your inbox rather than automatically deleting a spam that uh, you know the job acceptance letter or article acceptance letter so that important mails missing has got more consequence rather than having a bit more spam into your inbox isn't it so another uh, example would be clinical trial for me too drug what does that mean me too drugs that means that there is a uh, effective treatment already available for example uh, you know for uh, for example tuberculosis there are ac actually the drugs available in the market which are quite effective now a, a drug company is making another drug which is significantly cheaper than this existing drug and in that case uh, using a low alpha is okay because ha had it been false negative still you know the 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 reason the rationale is that it is better to abort an effective drug development than marketing an ineffective useless drug when better alternatives are already available so we already have a effective anti tuberculosis supplement then what is the point of marketing totally ineffective drug in the market that makes no sense so in that case you can put a very low alpha like 0 0.01 you can use high alpha for example 0.1 to minimize the false negative and it's ideal for the situations where the false positives are tolerated you know because the false positives are increased when you use a high alpha like 0.1 so in those situations where false positives are tolerated for example civil civil jurisdiction because the rationale is that it's better to punish many innocent than let one big huge illegal corporation set free you know that is a rationale behind it then for clinical trial for novel drug if you are marketing a new drug where the alternatives are not at all available it's better to market it rather than simply uh, you know uh, having no treatment scenarios for thousands of the patients you know it's better to market an ineffective uh, useless drug than aborting the development of an effective drug where no drugs are available in the market so in that kind of situations uh, uh, you know a very high uh, alpha like 0.1 is ideal while traditional two sigma threshold is being used in most of the sciences where you know that is basically the alpha is 0 0.05 that is not universal you know and this is called two sigma threshold because the two sigma means you know two standard deviations about the sample mean so in a bell diagram one sigma and two sigma within this two sigma the areas will contain the area of the probability density distribution will have 95 percentage of the entire elements in it so that is why it is uh, it's also called two sigma rule or uh, two sigma threshold so significance level in the particle physics for example is not just two it is basically three sigma if you want to say existence of an already non-particle for example higgs boson or neutrino if you have already detected this neutrino so you, you know we already know neutrino exists right so if you want to say that there is a neutrino at this particular sample then yes three sigma is perfectly acceptable but if you want to discover a new particle for example recently the gravitons have been discovered so if you want to make this kind of discovery then usual threshold of two sigma or even three sigma is insufficient you need to go for five sigma that is you know really really low number you can see that uh, for the discovery of uh, a new particle so there is a very famous statement by Carl Sagan he is a very famous astronomer as well as a, 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 a science communicator and popular science writer the one who wrote a very famous book which I always love in my young days as well as now it's called Cosmos so Carl Sagan said extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof so that is why you are going with lower and lower uh, you know threshold p level if you really want to make an extraordinary claim so alpha is the level of the significance i have already told you what it is so basically in this uh, two way table you can see the top level so that that particular uh, the highlighted in uh, yellow so a by a plus b is the alpha or the level of significance it is a fraction of false positives 
when the null hypothesis is true. So when the null hypothesis is true, what is the fraction of the false positives that you are going to get? So if the null hypothesis is true, what is the probability of incorrectly rejecting it? That is what this alpha says. So p-value, what is the correct interpretation of the p-value? Again, I explained that to you earlier. Let us go back to that once again. If the null hypothesis is true, what is the chance that we will get a difference as large as or larger than the difference that we got in our experiment? Uh, in an experiment of this size, if the populations really have the same mean, what is the probability of observing at least as high as or as large a difference as or larger than in fact observed? So these are the questions that the p-value will uh, uh, set out to prove. So let us assume that you compare two means and you obtain a p-value which is equal to 0 0.03. What does that mean? Correct conclusion is that there is a 3% chance of observing a difference as large as you observed if the two population means are identical. What are some effects of the p-value? P-values depend on the size of the difference that is also called effect size and the sample size. So two factors contributing to the p-values are effect size and sample size. If the difference is very large, that means effect size is very large, you are going to get a very low p-value and vice versa. If the sample size is enormous, you will get a very low p-value. So to increase the p-value, you know the effect size, of course, people cannot do anything with, but you can go with enormous sample to get a very low p-value. So a low p-value might be because of a large effect in tiny sample, or it could also be because of the tiny effect in large sample. So you will never able to conclude in which of these postulations are true. So having a low p-value doesn't mean it's because of the large effect. It could be just because of the large uh, sample but tiny effect. Who knows? So p-values can never be negative. That is one property. It is always positive. It's the probability value and it's always expressed in fraction and number between 0 and 1. P-value can be 1 in exceptional cases when the effect size equal to the null hypothesis. So p-value can never be 0, of course, like probability. P-values are always associated with a null hypothesis. If you don't have a null hypothesis, then the p-value makes no sense. P-values should not be interpreted alone. That's very, very important. It has to be interpreted in the light of a null hypothesis and also in the light of the prior probability. It should be interpreted in the light of the context or situation or the prior probability or PP, the concept that we are going to discuss in uh, module number 15 later. When a p-value is less than 0 0.05 and the investigator conclude that the result is statistically significant, can you be 95% sure that the fact is real? No is the answer because it depends on that situation. You know, that we are going to say, uh, see that when we discuss about the power, statistical power and calculating the effect size and also when we discuss about the Bayesian inference later. So interpreting the result that is not statistically significant is also tricky. So not statistically significant means only the calculated p-value was larger than the threshold p-value. So threshold p-value is just arbitrary. So again, not much information is uh, conveyed by uh, you know, uh, uh, a result which is declared as statistically not significant again. So remember that not to reject the null hypothesis does not mean that the null hypothesis is true. So those two statements have got, uh, you know, implicit differences. A high p-value could also be because of the type 2 error, falsely not rejecting the null hypothesis or false negative as explained earlier. When interpreting a high p-value, we should at first look the effect size or the difference in the mean uh, and the width of the confidence interval that is more important rather than simply looking at the p-values alone. Now there is a difference between statistical significance and scientific or biological or clinical significance. You know, the result is statistically significant if calculated p-value is lesser than the threshold p-value or significance level or alpha which is usually 0 0.05. A statistically significant finding might not necessarily mean that the result is scientifically or clinically significant or valid or interesting. 
so that you have to double check it is it really that interesting or not this is because of the arbitrary nature at which the significance level is decided the 0.05 or 0.1 or 0.01 or these are arbitrary values so if you are getting a significance merely because of the borderline case then probability is high that it is a false positive you know it's an artifact so to avoid confusion it's preferable to stick with the term statistically significant rather than simply writing significant if you simply write significant the result uh, then uh, uh, you know the, the reader might think that oh, okay the results are significant because maybe it is biologically significant or clinically significant well that is not the case so in summary significance level or alpha is chosen by the next experimenter as part of the experimental design prior hand even before doing that experiment you know while p value is computed from the data and these two terms are related while not synonymous significance level should be chosen based upon the tolerance limit of the two types of errors type 1 that is false positive and type 2 that is false negatives you can use low alpha like 0 0.01 to have less chance of making type 1 error that is false positive but beware chance of making type 2 error that is false negative is increased so it's ideal for situations where false negatives are tolerated you can use high alpha like 0.1 to have less chance of making type 2 error that is false negative but beware you know the chance of making type 1 error that is false positive is increased so it's ideal for situations where false positives are tolerated p value is defined as if the null hypothesis is true, what is the probability that the random sampling would have led to the difference as large as or larger than what is observed in your study? So it is more essential to know how p-values are correctly interpreted rather than how p-values are calculated. So uh, many uh, beginner students in statistics make this mistake. They will know how to compute the p-value but they don't know how to interpret the p-values. A low p-value does not mean the difference are scientifically significant or finding is interesting or warrant further uh, funding. So the p-value answers the question, is there a significant evidence of the difference? Not, is there an evidence of significant difference? So see, subtle difference between the, these two sentences are very important. Is there a significant evidence of difference? not is there an evidence which is you know significantly different so that two are very different so difference must be tiny or scientifically you know uh, negligible yet the decision based on the p value is statistically significant so that is the problem with the p value you should not overly emphasize on the p value so i hope you enjoyed i will see you in the next subsection of the same module thank you